OK, we're going to have a look at the stories now making headlines in the media across the world. And uh, guess what? We're going to start with Brexit. Uh, a story in The Guardian quoting the Confederation of British Industry, the CBI, saying a no-deal Brexit could have profound economic consequences, with the UK's GDP shrinking by up to 8%, putting thousands of jobs at risk. Uh, let's have a look at the Gulf News now. It's reporting on Mike Pompeo's tour of the Middle East region. In a speech in Cairo, the US Secretary of State said America was determined to rid Syria of Iranian influence. The FT has more worrying news about the state of the American economy. Perhaps the country's most famous traditional retailer, Macy's, uh, well, quite a downturn here in its share value. It issued a profit warning following weak festive sales. Uh, according to Bloomberg, things don't look so good for Europe's car making industry either. Demand weakened towards the end of last year, and manufacturers Ford and Jaguar Land Rover have announced thousands of job losses. Finally, we'll just focus on our own here. The BBC Sport website showing an image of Andy Murray and uh, wiping away a tear there. He did a few of those, actually. Uh, the British tennis player has announced his intention to retire this year following long-running injury problems. He wants to bow out at Wimbledon, uh, though he admits he may have to call it a day at the Australian Open, which starts just next week. Well, with me is Oliver Cornock from the Oxford Business Group. Oliver, thank you very much for being with us again. OK, so we're back to Brexit um, uh, and the CBI weighing in. No surprise in the way they're weighing in because their position hasn't really shifted over two years, but it's another big headline grabber with that 8% cut in GDP. Well, it's certainly a, a big headline, David, but as you rightly point out, it's nothing new. 8%, um, that's just another figure in the ether here. What is clear, though, is business is reeling from this uncertainty. Um, we've heard that car story, you know, we'll come to. But, you know, increased costs, increased tariffs and supply, um, supply chain concerns are all going to be weighing on British business, wherever they and whatever sector they're in. Um, and this lack of clarity, should there be no deal, is really beginning to bite. However, as you, is it really much for a big story? It's been something we've been talking about for months. Um, the, the, the average person on the street is getting pretty bored with this, I suspect. Well, maybe, but it sort of reflects some of what the Bank of England have been saying mm. in figures as well, doesn't it? But, but, I mean, you would know better than I would, but there are so many businesses who have been strapped in this world of not knowing... Do we jump? What, do, what measures do we take? What sort of an outcome are we going to get? And I suppose as every day goes by and it's still there, all that contingency that hasn't taken place is bound to frighten a business above all. It, indeed. And I think at this time of the year when people are doing their budgets, um, this will be weighing very heavily. Of course, people have been factoring in this for a long time. You know, markets and things have factored a certain element of slowdown into this. The real concern has to be that it does seem that the world may be on the brink of a more broad slowdown, and I think that's worth thinking about, David. Yeah, OK, let's move on to the Gulf news now. Uh, Mike Pompeo, who's on his, his tour, mm. major speech uh, at the American University of Cairo yesterday, and the focus was pretty clear. It was about uh, Iran is the, uh, is the big malevolent factor in, in this administration's sort of eye view. A very poignant speech, because it comes 10 years, really, de a decade mm. after the Obama speech. Speech, the great, you know, reset button that was going to be kicked into play, um, resetting the relationship between the United States, previously seen as very hawkish, um, uh, into a more, uh, you know, benevolent situation. That has not really happened, as we've seen with the Trump administration. Indeed, it seems to be that this is slightly ironic. You know, on one level, they're talking about re-engagement, but then this withdrawal from Syria. What is really clear, and remember this is in the Gulf News, which mm. is very much focused uh, you know, in, in the UAE, which is uh, implacably opposed to Iran's expansion, or perceived expansion. So this is the Trump administration lining with its Gulf allies and really coming on a very hawkish position on Iran. He did say in the speech itself, which is not reflected in the top line there, it might be later in the story, um, that you need to assist, didn't he? He said, you will have to shoulder responsibility. It was That was the message in terms of, we're still engaged, but... Yeah, and he, he also said this quite interesting thing. The US is a force for good in the Middle East. Um, quite questionable to, to a lot of Arab people. Well, that's, yes, indeed. OK, the Financial Times having a look at the, uh, the Christmas sales figures coming out of the US. Actually, Macy's um, 
uh, share price virtually collapsed, didn't it? Yeah, 19% so down. 19% down on figures that weren't dreadful, but they'd had to put a warning out, and that's the problem. Indeed, and I think it's always this, it's, it's, it's this um, reporting season that comes up with these figures, particularly for the retail sector. Victoria's Secret again down. A lot of these key, um, key high street, US high street names posting losses. Um, it's in interesting against the backdrop of the UK as well, where we saw a lot of traditional retailers struggling in the Christmas, you know, usually a period of high sales when people go shopping. Um, Black Friday, that, that Friday after Thanksgiving in mm. the United States, um, did see a boost, but it wasn't significant enough to tip the dial. And this is all about the digital story. People it was almost, yeah, sorry, it was yeah. almost a full storm, wasn't it, that it gave a, a, a sense of confidence that then had to be pulled back again. And I just wonder, in fact, I bumped into a colleague yesterday mm. who was returning goods after Christmas. Yeah. And that's another big problem, isn't it? Particularly with online sales, I think people buy a lot more than they're going to keep and then send a lot of it back. And I think there's there's not only that, there's a the psychological element of, of, of if, if you transact online, it doesn't quite feel like a cash transaction. And so people then have a regret as well. The bigger, bigger story there, though, David, is this shift online and the traditional retailers struggling with that. And that's only going to grow, isn't it? I'm Absolutely. Uh, exponentially, probably as well this year. Uh, you you uh, referred to um, the uh, the auto industry and the job losses there. We've got a, a headline uh, here actually, which is well, it's an interesting one, is it? Jaguar to slash 4,500 jobs in Brexit slump. Mm. So it puts the Brexit issue at the top of that headline. Is that fair, do you think, as a, as a way of addressing the story? I think it's a really important point, and I'd actually argue this is, um, this is not such a big Brexit story. I think um, I'm very critical of, of, of the UK just navel-gazing and discussing Brexit the whole time. The bigger backdrop here is that um, we have uh, emissions controls increasing, the appetite for diesel cars reducing, legislation around them increasing all over the world, and also China, a huge consumer of vehicles, and indeed the rest of the emerging markets, all slowing down a bit or shifting where they're buying. So this is a much bigger story. We're seeing Ford announcing $14 billion of cuts that need to be made. We're seeing Jaguar Land Rover talking about £2.5 billion of cuts. This is not good news for the car industry. No, and I suppose that's across the piece, isn't it? Particularly with, with um, Jaguar Land Rover, they have a preponderance of, of diesel uh, vehicles, don't they? So I suppose they, that is going to hit them even harder than many other... Uh, Indeed, and whilst foreign-owned, of course, Jaguar Land Rover has a huge presence in the UK. Uh, and that's where a lot of these jobs are going? Indeed. OK. Um, Ollie, thank you. We're going to return now to uh, the story that we're leading on, of course, Andy Murray. I mean, I have to say, when I heard the story, without having seen him, my first thought was, well, they're tweaking this for all they're mm. worth, the headline uh, makers, because it sounded so final. And yet it is. Mm. This is it. It's a, it's a really sad day. I mean, Andy Murray has been a, a stalwart of the British sporting scene. Um, and and as, as the gentleman who spoke earlier said, you know, British tennis players get a really rough ride. Indeed, I think British sports people get a really rough ride. If they were good in front of a camera, they'd be doing, they'd be doing your job, David. <laughs> um, these are professional sports players. I mean, Andy Murray has, has really struggled. And in an era of, um, you know, three megastars of the tennis scene, um, he's, he's managed to put himself there and win Grand Slams time and again. Yeah, the idea of having to uh, come back from being world number one, dealing with a hip injury yeah. that lasts for the best part of two years, actually. Um, here we've got some pictures of him once again, really struggling to yeah. get that message out. That he, he, in fact, he had to use the words, didn't he? I will stop playing, and I think he found that very difficult. Uh, but he, my goodness, he's tried to get back. Absolutely, and I think you know it was very, it's always been very funny as, a, as, a, as somebody who's British. You know, when Andy Murray was losing, he was Scottish, and when he was winning, he was British. And um, that says it all. We, we, we take our sport very seriously in the UK, and Andy Murray um, is, a, is a real icon. I just wonder. We had Henman Hill. I wonder if Murray's Mount. I mean, I wonder how he's going to be immortalised at Wimbledon, which he's sort of clearly trying to get to. Well, we've we've put, we've been asking for all your views as well on 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 what you make of Andy Murray and what he's achieved. They've been coming in thick and fast. We will get more out in due course. But Ollie, thank you very much indeed. Nice to run uh, the rule over the uh, world's media with you. Uh, do stay.